Hello, friends. It's David Vos again, and it's another beautiful day in Oklahoma. And I really hope you're having a wonderful day where you are. And we have to make another video today. And it's not like we're running out of material. You know, the more I get into, the more I put out information about certain things, I think the more I disappoint a lot of people. I mean, like I said yesterday, it's like a religion. Flat Earth is like a religion. And now I find out that this other thing I hit upon about the missing thousand years in the Tartarian Empire and all of this is another... It's part of the religion. There is a growing number of people that have their own history, that have their own belief system on just about everything. And even if they disagree on everything, they have in common that they believe that the earth is flat. I mean, they may say that they disagree on models of that. Um, but or, or varying degrees of how many years we we're missing. As long as you believe that there is a great deal of history that's been missing, you believe the earth is flat, and, and certain things like that, then they're, they're so happy to be your friend. And they are very forgiving and kind persons. You probably would be considered their brother and sister. But the minute that you step out of line, they literally hate you. Friends, yesterday after I did that video about the thousand years that we're missing and I gave my opinion about how I don't believe it, and I'm going to go into some more of that today. Boy, friends, I've got to tell you some more stuff about that. And I have to tell you that that. I found out so much information over the last couple of days, well, after the last day since I've been talking to you yesterday, that it almost convinced me. But I'm not quite convinced. <laughs> and in fact, I don't think I'll ever be convinced, but I do want to show you some evidence. But before we get to that, real quickly, when I got off the uh, video making yesterday, and I'd published that video, uh, right at the moment that I went and clicked on the video to see how I was doing, and I have to do a couple of uh, checks on it after I load it, and a lot of times I'll watch it again to make sure that it, you know that there's not uh, some mistake or something on the video. And usually that's the first time I get to hear it is after it's been loaded, and I actually will many times sit and watch my own video. And as I'm watching my video yesterday. After I'm done, you know, doing everything and I can relax and I get me a cup of coffee or a glass of wine by that time. Usually it's late. Somebody says, Dave, Dave, Dave. And, and you know who you are. I don't remember now who it was that told me in the in the info or the comment boxes. They said, uh, Santos Bonacci is doing a, a flat earth debate and it's going real well. And it's on right now. It's live. And I'm like, oh, well, I better go look at that because, you know. Uh, if it's live, you know, I want to see what's going on. So I flipped over there, and I'll be darned if it wasn't live. And I caught it right at the beginning. And I have to tell you guys something, and, and this is hard for me to say. I didn't even know if I should tell you. I mean, I've debated as to whether or not to mention anything. And that, I don't know. I, I, out of some kind of weird respect for Santos, because, you know, we have some similarities. You guys must know. Any of you guys who have ever seen a lot of my videos and, and a lot of his videos, you know what I mean. There, there's definitely a lot of similarities. I never met the man. I have no, I've never spoken to him. I have seen five or six of his videos, or I suppose, I'm just guessing. I've heard a lot about him. A lot of the people that watch my videos watch his. And I know that he's into astrology and astrotheology and so forth. And... He's a big proponent of the flat earth. I believe he's one of the main gurus in that religion. And I believe this is relatively 
recent with him, because I don't think he always believed that. And I think he'd have been so much better off if he had never found the flat earth ideas. But he's having this debate with an, a, a literal nuclear scientist. A very intelligent, you could tell, I could tell that, that the man that he was debating was a very intelligent, and it seemed like to me a decent person, although he did get carried away after being called every name in the book, after having his mother besmirched in ways in which most people would probably have hung up immediately, would have would have ended that, I don't know how long they went, like an hour in this debate or something, or I don't know, it seemed like an hour. And there were a couple of moments where both sides almost, you know, walked off the set or, or clicked off the debate and, and ended it. And there was a moment where the other side, not the Santos side, threatened to send all of the emails that Santos had sent him to the police. They were that bad. Friends, listen to me. I, I, I don't... I'm still not quite completely sure whether it's appropriate for me. For one thing, I feel bad for Santos because he's deteriorated to this point. Physically, I think, as well as mentally here. I don't know whether it's the vegetarianism or what it is that's happening to him. But he's deteriorating into an angry, very, very vulgar, very vulgar, uh, I dare say disgusting human being. And I know that I'm going to lose a lot of, of people right there and then. But before you click off, I just want to say something. Go and watch that hour video and you'll understand why now I've never said too many bad things about Santos I did say in the last a few videos ago that I would like to 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 debate him on this issue of the flat earth I think I showed some respect for him and you guys know why I try to respect everybody but look I'm not being mean here I'm doing this because for anyone who don't know what happened last night, you need to go find out. Especially those of you who think that this man is somebody to be looked up to and believed. That many of you think he's got this amazing knowledge. And I'll tell you that a lot of his knowledge is completely made up in the frying pan. That he just... There's a lot of these people that are doing this. They're getting real good at this. You've got... Black Israelites that are running around saying only the black race is the chosen race. And they've got, they've got a lot of good argument. Hey, this goes back to a lot of different arguments like uh, neo-Nazis. They have books. They've published volumes and volumes and intricate details of their beliefs that if you were to read them, you would get excited and probably start thinking they were true. They have uh, historical records and they go through uh, volumes of information and some of it which is supposedly secret because they banned it and wouldn't let you find out and oh when you find out you're going to say oh they you know they lied to us about this and that and and so this this can go and no matter who you are there's always a conspiracy theory about it and I could give you a few of my own but what I'm saying is is that what Santos did last night was filthy. It was disgusting. The way he talked to that man. He never had any respect for that other person because that other person was a scientist who didn't agree with him. I don't think he knew him. Santos has been sending hundreds of email messages that were absolutely disgusting to this person. Talking about his mama and grabbing his crotch and, and telling him he's, a, he's just a nothing but a masturbator and that he better keep his hands on. Look, I don't know how to else to, I want you guys to go watch this yourself. He called him an MFer and a, and, and a, and a CFer and a, and a, and a, uh, he kept telling him to shut up, GD, F you, all the way through for a full hour. At one point, Santos Bonacci got up from his chair 
start going through the motions of something very degrading that I won't mention here online, on, on this internet, on this video. But he started pantomiming a very disgusting act in such a manner that you would think it was a three-year-old child An imbecile. A very immature, disgusting individual he has turned into. I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen Santos. I'll tell you what, after watching that last night, I don't think I could debate the man. Because I wouldn't sit for five seconds listening to that kind of vulgarity. Because I didn't agree with him. And here's the thing, guys. It's, this is what I was saying yesterday. I was trying to get this across. And it proved my point today. Not only just listening to Santos last night. By the way, he's, Santos had that on his channel last night. And this morning it's gone. Even he knows. I think he was told by a lot of people that it was disgusting and vulgar. And they didn't want anything else to do with him. And I think he decided to pull it. But the other guy that he was debating still has it up on his channel. I don't know whether I'll leave a link to that or not. Um, you guys know where you can go and find it. Look up Santos Bonacci. Uh, you know, uh, interview put in the timetable like last night. And it's going to be on his channel. It's on this other guy's channel. I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. Maybe I'll post a link. I don't know. But after that, I took a look at the comments, and, and, and look, all the comments on every video I do about Flat Earth or whatever, and I'll agree, I mean, I'll admit, I mean, I, I did laugh, hysterically, about one of the points that Flat Earthers make, in one of my videos, forgive me for that, it made me laugh, because I thought it was so ridiculous, and I'm sorry, but I, I, I to me, it's just so, come on, this has been what we, we have learned all of us have learned some very important scientific facts like algebra, math. You know, I think it's funny for some Johnny come lately to come along and tell me that calculus is, is ridiculous and that the earth is flat now. It, it's just incomprehensible. It, it, it is some sort of phenomenon happening to people. I guess the floodwaters have opened and people have a legitimate claim to just believing anything they want anymore. And we got the YouTube and people are making claims and it's just rampant and people are just believing it. Just, just, oh my gosh, all the trees are upside down in Europe. No, go look, go look, go look. And they show you a picture of somebody's tree upside down in their yard because of a hurricane or something. See what I'm telling you? It's all it's ever, the whole world's coming to an end because all the trees are upside. I mean, this is the way people act. So, I've had a lot of comments, degrading, disgusting comments about myself because I didn't agree with them. And people saying, I'm, you know, unsubscribing. So, On the last video I did yesterday, I had a comment, a quite long, lengthy comment. Now, I'm not certain, and so I'm not, you know, I'm not specifically saying whose comment it was. So I don't want to, you know, point and single anybody out. But it was a, it was a person that I think is possible happens to be the author of one of the videos that I've seen recently. That's as far as I'll go. So for me, it's, it's, it, it's interesting. And I'm not going to say the person's name. I know, this is getting weird because I don't like to expose people. I don't want to talk about people on my videos because I, I respect people's opinions and stuff. But in general, I need to expose some of this stuff. So this person, I was told by somebody, a friend of mine, go look at this person's channel and look at their videos. Now, they believe in the Tartarian 
scenario and the thousand years that are missing or eight. I think they believe it was 850 years that were missing. And get this. Once they came to that conclusion, they now believe that everything about the second coming of Christ has already happened. I guess in about 100 AD or something. And that the resurrection has occurred and it's really brilliant. Brilliant! How they put it all together. Brilliant! And you watch an hour of that and then several of her maybe several hours of this and she's brilliant and she puts it all together Jesus came he said it would be in that generation that all these things would take place 70 AD and then because of all the missing years there was no Roman Empire just wasn't there was no Greek Empire there was no Roman Empire and so history begins 100 years after Jesus Christ in around the year um, I well either way you want to look at it we're either in the year 1000 I think she believes we're in the year 1200 now not in the year 2021 so either you can take the, the first half of the last 2000 years and say that we went through that but the other half was bogus I believe they think that the last thousand years that we've been going through really is the first thousand years And they have some very good information to open your mind to that possibility. And once it gets you to believing that, and then they show you some other little preponderances. This whole big thing about the mud flood that's going around. I touched on that yesterday. And that mud flood had, is no record of that in history. And, and as, as I said, the reason for... The fact, and you'll see a lot of pictures here on today's video, where, what they're talking about with this flood or this mud flood that they're talking about. I guess this is something that Santos talks a lot about too. The reason for that is because over time, the ground builds up because of the leaves and the trees and the brush that grow every year. Think about how in the spring... All the grass grows, a foot of grass, a two feet of grass during the year. And how the shrubs and the little trees and little bushes grow. And how a tree grows and the branches grow and all the leaves, flowers. And all of that happens in a 12 month period and then dies again and goes back to mulch. So... We know, yes, we do know, I believe that the earth is growing, that the surface of the ground, it, and even if you didn't believe it was growing all the way around, because, I mean, obviously, we, we definitely see when we, we show those um, satellite images of the ocean, and you can see that at the bottom of the ocean, there is no buildup, because you can see the lines and the, and the, the tunnels down there. That, yes, guys, I know for any of you who didn't see those videos, go back and look, but there are tunnels under the ocean. Evidently, they've been there for thousands of years and they're not covered with sand. So perhaps at the bottom of this depth, there is no buildup of soil. And there's a lot more ocean in the world than there is land. So it's obviously the buildup of, of Earth comes mostly from the, the, the vegetation. And there's not enough vegetation, I guess, in the ocean to build up the waters or, or the land at the bottom of the ocean. And another indication of this, we talked about Arizona. And how over there in Arizona, you can dig down, or, or right on the surface of the ground, you can see dinosaurs at times, and petrified wood from thousands of years ago, and no buildup of soil. And I guess this is why you can find ruins. They may be much older than we think. But, I bring that up again because I was just looking at a story which had to do with the mud flood thing and the Tartarian thing. And they were talking about California and how it was originally called California because of Queen Khalifa, who was supposed to have been the great queen who ruled the, 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 the land of California. But they had water on both sides. It was an island. And so they were showing how there was an old map 
that showed California as an island. It was quite large, like a country almost. And so the water that we go, it goes up through the, the Baja Peninsula just keeps going right up through Arizona and Nevada. And that's why when you go into Nevada and Arizona and parts of southern Idaho and parts of uh, Utah and stuff, you find seashells all over the ground, even at four, five, six, eight thousand 8,000 feet above sea level on the mountains and on the hills, just covered with seashells. As a young man, when I used to live in southern Idaho, Idaho, we would go. I know I remember we went to this place one time. I was a young man and my brothers went and some of them in my family and I guess we were just messing around, having a picnic or camping or whatever. And I remember this hill was just covered in seashells. Just about everywhere around southern Idaho is. It's just covered in seashells. And I remember that little hill was about 8,000 feet. Because that whole peninsula or that area, that sand is pretty high. Like three, four, five thousand 5,000 feet all the way through there. So, so how would it ever been covered by water? Well, evidently it's been pushed up in a recent geological time. It used to be the Great Salt Lake is the last remnants of what used to be a great basin or sea. And that sea goes all the way from places up in, even up in Washington area, all the way down through the east side of Oregon, down through Nevada, parts of Utah, southern Idaho, and Arizona, and all the way down to the Baha'i Peninsula. It was a an island, so to speak, California was. And so it seems to me that the places that were at the bottom of the waters do not build up soil like that. But lots of places where there were civilizations on land has built up tens of feet, even hundreds of feet at times of topsoil that you must dig down to find. And this is occurring in, in a space of a thousand years or so. So this mud flood that people are seeing, rather than proving that there's been missing years, it may actually prove that the years are accurate because it takes about a thousand years or more to build that much soil up to have the whole story of that building be buried. And if you look at these buildings in these pictures here, you'll see they have windows. They used to be above ground. They had windows. A lot of them had windows. So either... There was some kind of mud flood, as they say, or time has actually gone by. Now, we can look at history. There are lots and lots and lots of historical documents. One of the things that you are not hearing, you'll hear the evidence for their point of view. But you rarely hear any, they won't put forth any of the evidence against. So you're getting a skewed view of what they're trying to tell you when you're looking at these people in their videos. Let me give you an example. And then I will give you uh, the pros for what they're saying. I will actually honestly tell you a couple of things that threw me back. And I don't think it's a bad thing for people to think about these. I'm thinking about this information because I am also taking a look at all this information to see if there's any something or another that we do have out of place. But I want to make sure that I don't just throw away facts that were facts because I don't like the modern scenario and I just make up some, some other uh, history to suit myself. I don't want to live in a fantasy, and I don't think we, any of us should. We have to be very careful. We can't assume that just because we did a little research on YouTube that we now have an accurate historical understanding of everything, and we know all science, and we're completely unerrant without having looked at all the evidence. So, here is a reason against the missing 1,000 years. So I'm going to take this 
from the point of view of the last video I saw on this, because I personally think I've seen a few people talking about Tartaria, but I think this lady has about the best information on it that you can get. And I may even put a link in the info box so you can go and listen to what she has to say. But she takes this deep. She doesn't just cover Tartaria and the missing years, but she talks about a lot of the evidence that people are giving for their understanding that there's this missing period of time. One of the, those things we talked about yesterday, which is they see that most of the dates, like 1753 or 1921 or whatever, well, I wouldn't be 19, but going back to before 1800, the one at the beginning is usually written as a small I. And she says, and many are saying this may, I don't know where they get this because just, they're just making this up. I mean, no one's ever said this, but they're saying they think that means Isus in the year of Jesus or Isus. Sometimes it's a J, they say. I did see a few times where it was written as a J. And then just 757 seven for 1757. And they say the I does not, it's a smaller letter. It's not a numeral. It's an I. As I pointed out, that's just the way that they wrote in calligraphy. But anyway, she goes into a lot of that information. But she goes through a lot of scriptural proof that that's what the Bible teaches, that Jesus said the, that the whole thing, the tribulation, the Antichrist and all that has to have happened with Nero in the first century. And she gives a lot of very good proof for that. And she says the thousand years then has already occurred. It hasn't been 2,000, but just a 1,000. And we're in the year 1,200. That little short period of time, she says, where the devil's let loose out of his prison at the end of the thousand years. And the Gog and Magog War, which is at the end of the thousand years, not at the beginning. Well, this is all very interesting. It's very interesting. And it does correlate in many respects. But if that were true, then that means the, inter the whole 850 years from Christ down to 850, 900, 1000. That 850 years in there, the first part of the 2000 years. That would mean that that whole thing we talked about, like the Charlemagne information that I gave you guys in that other video about uh, them bringing in a tribe, a lineal descendant of the tribe of Judah and the Holy Roman Empire and the, and the Inquisitions and the Waldensians and the Fisher Kings and all of that would just be completely made up. And so if Charlemagne... And, and their Carolinian dynasty had been all completely made up, there would have to be some sort of parallel corresponding to that, which is also made up in the rest of Europe and in Britain and with the papacy. We've got lots of records with the papacy. We have lots of records during that time in China, for instance, and the Byzantine Empire. So if there were this particular time between Christ and 1000 AD that was missing or di didn't exist, they made it up. You couldn't just say that um, one kingdom was there, all their history was made up. But this other kingdom still got records. How do you put that together? In fact, what about Muhammad? Islam. We have in the year 600, around that time, Islam coming up. And all of the wars and the Saracens and the, the Moors and the, and the, the Persians. We got histories in China, India. We have the Islamic expansion. Somebody, who made that up? Just one person? We would just have one historian? There's lots of historians. What about Herodotus? What about Manetho? 
And so a lot of people say, well, it was the Roman, the Romans that made up Josephus. They just made him up. Remember, he had the title, the surname of Flavius Josephus, because he wiggled his way in there with the Romans and became important. And they let him be this historian. And so he may have, because he was working for the Romans, he may have lied about history. There you go, Dave. And and Plutarch, a lot of his, Augustus Caesar burned most of his books, wouldn't let him write things. Pliny wasn't allowed to write everything he wanted. We have this in history. Church Fathers, Origen, Ignatius. Who were these guys? Justin Martyr. Marcion, that, that, that was a, a very important, integral person to the entire history of many of these Protestant churches and Gnostic believers. And, and we dug up the Nagamadi Library. All of these different things would have to have been uh, invented and created separately, but all in conjunction and some sort of secret conspiracy. Muslims, which is completely different than Gnostics, and yet we dig up books and they've dated him to that time. We've got the whole story how the Visigoths defeated the Roman Empire in 400. And we were just talking about how the Visigoths have the Ostrogoths and the, and the Visigoths, which is the East and the West Goths. And in the middle was called Septimania with the seven cities. And this is an entire history that you just can't, if you just made it up, I mean, the Chinese mention these characters. We have historical records from Baghdad at the time that, that Charlemagne went down there and got the king. Look, I'll admit that some of the British history in the early first several hundred years AD, almost some of them do kind of read like mythologies, like, you know, King Arthur and stuff like this. And 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 um some of the the stories of 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 the Irish legends and Teatifi and all of these things but they read as authoritative as scripture and every nation has these ancient legends and sometimes that's all we have of certain periods of history but those legends fit perfectly and and remember some of these like the the legends of King Arthur were written in prose like as if it was history. Just because, I mean, you know, Sir Isaac Newton believed in many of these that we things we call legends. Like how there was a god that married a young maiden and became, and had a child named Romulus and started the Roman Empire. He believed that was real, that these gods were individuals that we have in our historical writings. The Sumerians go back to these gods that lived thousands of years and lived on the earth. I believe it was accurate too. But here's the thing. So we're supposed to believe that the Romans, the reason we don't have any correct histories because the Romans burned it all. We don't have any historians. And they hired these historians that we do have to lie. But wait a minute. If that whole thousand years doesn't exist, then not only does Rome not exist, maybe the tail end of it, the Holy Roman Empire, but where did they get the impetus to call themselves the Third Reich? I mean, they have history. They get edicts and paper bulls and skirmishes and wars between various king lines. We've got it all. But you're going to say that Rome just didn't exist. Especially up till when they were defeated by the Visigoths. And even after that. So we're going to give up the whole story of the Gnostics, the Hermetic teachings, the Sethian Gnostic Gospels that we've dug up, we found them, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Bogomiles, the Cathars that were murdered in Inquisitions. We're going to give up all of the information about Justin Tinian and the, and the debates that they had in their councils and the anathemas against certain heretics, the Huguenot uh, bloodbath. We're going to give up the concept of Constantine 
coming and conquering under the cross, the Council of Nicaea, which declared that this was the canon of scripture we would use. Oh, and there was no Marcion canon of scripture. That didn't exist because there was no history. The entire thousand years is missing. It's gone. So therefore, you you're, you're say you believe in Jesus, but how do you even believe in Jesus if you can just scratch a thousand years of history? Because most of what we're talking about there during that thousand years, whether it's Islam or, or the Catholic Church arising, all the martyrs that were dying, the Gnostics, the Waldensians, the Cathars, the Bogomiles, the Moors, Baghdad and, 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 and China, and all of these things that were going on during this time are integral to our story about Jesus and how Christianity became what it is today. And how we've got the King James Version. And and, and about the, the, the uh, Holy Textus Receptus. And how the Fisher Kings preserved the Holy Grail. And the Holy Textus Receptus. And how they... Yes, some of this is legends in Britain. They've got a few legends mixed in with some annals of history. Some people might think they sound a little legendish, but there are quite a bit of real historical documents that we have. They don't just start out of out of nowhere. They start from Britain and they explain how they got there. And they are cousins and they're related to the kings and they can trace their king line all the way back. Whether it, if it's through the Stuarts back to the Fisher Kings to Martial France. All of this has been documented. Now look, just in a little few minutes in this video, I can't just give you all the history. Even if I remembered it all or knew it all off the top of my head. I'm just telling you there is a lot of actual documents that we can't just throw away. But... I do sympathize with people who get taken off their their concepts that, that they've been born with and told all their life because of these things that pop up that are so interesting. Here's another one. We talked about a couple yesterday. And I have to tell you, I had to take a double take about when I heard this. But according to our history, Athens was like 400, 500 BC. Greece. Greece was before Rome, right? The Greeks and then the Romans. And the Romans came along in 30 BC and started a, a kind of an empire and defeated some things. Greece went down, Alexander the Great went down in 330 BC and defeated the Egyptians. And he had generals that went around the world. And he made a vast empire. I mean, that is congruent and correlates with scripture. We've got the, the, uh, the book of Maccabees. The book of Daniel, which is some, most people think a prophecy. Some people think it was written afterwards. But it's got the whole history in there. Up until Rome and the coming of Christ. And But there are the books of Enoch, and we, so we have the pseudograph, but we also have historical writings that Babylon wrote during that time, and the Egyptians, and, the, and Karchemish, and, and other nations, and the Armenians, and so forth. But when you get back that far, most of these nations have a, more or less a legend that tells you where they came from. They don't give you this uh, consistent history like the king lived 30 years and his father's name was and his father lived 30 years and this goes back they didn't have a, a, a calendar like we do that's been consistent since the Julian calendar was made in, in 45 BC and we've still been carrying on with the same basic calendar since then for the last 2,000 years so it would be difficult in the last 2,000 years to forget some time because 
you know, people would notice if it's Saturday and all of a sudden somebody said it was Sunday, you know, or somebody said, oh, now it's Monday. Or, you know, it's, it's January and somebody decides to say, oh, it's spring now. Somebody would have noticed that. Now they can change things easily if they don't have this long continuous calendar. So let's say that, that Rome starts in 30 BC and they start dating from that time that they had this king or this, this great war. So from the great battle of Chishamash, it's been a hundred years in the reign of Nero or something. Okay, well, that's only like a uh, hundred years or something. How does that relate to the Chinese uh, history and, and all these different histories? Well, you have these individuals that come along, historians, after a thousand years or something, and they go back and take these records and they put them together. They could be wrong by 50 years, a hundred years. Maybe they uh, think that the, the great uh, earthquake that one nation talks about is the same great earthquake that another nation talks about and they mesh it at that point and it wasn't the same earthquake or something i mean so it can you can have missing years but there is enough history out there and enough of these historians that have tried to put all this together that they've gotten it down pretty close and almost all historians agree all the way back to about 587 bc with the destruction of jerusalem by the Babylonians. Every historian has agreed to that. Doesn't matter where you go. Christian historians, Muslim historians, Buddhist historians, all of them agree to this information. We have clear historical evidence for this. But, so, before 600 BC, it gets a real foggy The Greeks say that they come out of the sea, you know, maybe um, they got on a boat and, and they don't know where they came from and they describe this homeland, right? Lots of kingdoms have their ancient homeland being somewhere under the bottom of the sea or in heaven or something. But so that part might be mythology, you know, like even in the Bible, you know, the six days of creation and just God created it, right? And well, how come women are inferior, well, because it was a woman that was deceived and ate the apple. Oh, okay, I get it. All right, so that's why she's got to wear a veil and do what she's told. Oh, God, I got it. See, that might that might be mythology in a sense. Well, more than likely, it's a parable that tells you what happened. But not the actual word-for-word -word history. I suppose there might not have ever been a serpent wandering around talking, you know, in the garden. That doesn't mean we discount the fact that Adam lived 930 years. Even then, we might say, oh, well, it, it may be code. Maybe he lived uh, 93 years, or maybe he lived 9,000 years. Because, you know, the Sumerians were saying their gods lived hundreds of thousands of years. So we haven't been able to understand a lot of that ancient history. Because it all kind of goes back into the sea, or into the underground, or from the mountain top of the great mountain, you know. From heaven we came, right on a ship. Okay, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But we know history from about 600 B.C. Well, that's about the time that the Greeks came up. And they started under the generals of Alexander the Great defeating and conquering the world. Well, what's really interesting is, is that they, build, they built uh, a kingdom of wisdom and philosophy. It's supposed to be the greatest kingdom. And it was all built on uh, science. And so people like... Pythagoras and Aristotle. Well, even uh, Alexander the Great was a student of Aristotle. He went to the great university and had teachings about poetry. And he learned math. And he, he learned to, to be an engineer. He learned history. He learned the mysteries. And a lot of the Greeks learned the mysteries because they were very interested. As were the pharaohs. They learned, they were priests. And they, they learned the mysteries in the priest in the temple. And so, as we've said, Pythagoras, who was Aristotle's teacher, learned the mysteries from Solon and Thales, who were Egyptian priests from the Egyptian temples. And so, Plato, 
a few years later became a student. And he wrote this book that to this day we rever all around the world. It's called Plato's Republic. And every kingdom that is established today bases their whole fundamental principle of existence as a government entity on Plato, which he got all of his information from Socrates and Aristotle and Pythagoras and Thales and the great Pharaonic priesthood of Egypt. And they had science and they had all of it, and astrology and astronomy. So if you were to come along and tell me all of a sudden that Plato never existed, it would be shocking. Because everything that we do in this world is based on Plato and Pythagoras. Geometry, Pythagoras invented it. Astronomy, astrology, the mysteries, the Bible account of the story of, of the 12 tribes and, and all of this. It, it, Newton believed that history was all messed up and that we didn't really go back to Babylon or something, that it was really all about Solomon. Solomon was the great king and he was the first of the great kings. And and it's kind of like what I've been telling you guys, that, that, that whoever was the priests that were there in the Alexandrian library, like Pliny and Josephus, who, who went to that priesthood and learned all that knowledge, and they were scribes, and they worked for the supposed Romans. It seems they're the ones who wrote the New Testament and the Old. What were they writing? A Reader's Digest version of all the ancient history. But, the story goes that the world had been savages. And they believed in, it was kind of like going from the law of Moses to, to this new age of wisdom. Of course, in Christianity, they thought that, that was even inferior to what they were going to do. Now they were creating the, 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 the government of love. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Which was foolishness to the Greeks, Paul said. And a stumbling block to the Jews. But Moses set up a law. And they had sacrifice. Well, the Greeks thought that was ridiculous. Sacrificing animals to the gods. Ha ha ha! That was just folly. That was ridiculous. They didn't think the gods were, were bearded men floating in yonder heavens. They thought they were principles. And they tried to understand with mathematics how the universe was evolved. And they started thinking that human beings needed a culture of, of having baths and, and comforts. And, uh, not punishing people, but rehabilitating them and, 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 and giving people some leisure times and theaters and coliseums. And yes, it got bad at times, like under the Romans and the gladiators. And, it's, and there's always bad elements. But the Greeks were loved. And they had this thing called the Parthenon or the Acropolis that was the center of their great kingdom and had the great libraries and, and the great baths and the pools and, and, and people would come and, and debate, right? The, the, the poets would write poetry and they'd wear their long robes and, and they were supposed to be superior to all other nations that ever lived. And when they made these buildings, these temples, they made them to gods like Aphrodite. They worshipped love. They didn't do like the ancient Babylonians and worship the god of death. They were trying to become enlightened. They were, they didn't really believe it was all literal anyway. So, but what, but what's interesting is they had this architecture that really was from Egypt. If you look at, the, the, they're all, you know, in our Bible, you hear a lot about Solomon's temple and it had these colonnades, these pillars. Well, the way it's described with Jackin and Boaz, these two pillars, they've never found anything like that in present day Palestine, but they have found that exact temple down in Luxor, uh, Luxor, Egypt. And many people as myself believe that was Solomon's temple. 
Remember, Jesus was crucified at the hill of Golgotha. But I can prove to you that the that this hill of Golgotha was in Egypt. And I can also prove to you that it was in Rome. Because the great uh, capital building there in Rome, where the Senate met, which had all this Greek architecture, you know, and the pillars and all that stuff like you see at Washington now. That was also built over a skull. And it was called the Place of the Skull. So we don't know if Jesus, you know, like I say, a lot of this historical documents and stuff is mixed with mythology. We don't know every detail. The question is, how much have we been lied to about it? I've said that I think originally Jerusalem was down in Egypt. And it seems like the story takes off no matter what country you're in and they have the same exact location. Right? And they've got the same hill. The same mountain that they worship. Even the Japanese worship at Mount Moriah. And they got priests with white robes and they got two handles that they, you know, four priests that, that lift up a thing called a square box that looks like the Ark of the Covenant. And, and nobody touches it, right? And they have this Samurai priesthood or Sumerian priests. And they've got what looks to be like Hebrew letters in their alphabet. And holy days on the, like in the Day of Atonement and stuff like this. Very similar. All around the world. But what got me is this little bit of information that I had never really thought about. From 400 BC, or somewhere around there, from this great Acropolis in Athens that today still stands, supposedly, like the rem remnants of it, this Colosseum or whatever. You can still see the pillars, right? Which would be, what, about 2,400 years old? 2,500 years old? That's a long time, still standing, right? It's not Because it's not like the pyramids. It's big, huge tons and tons of stone chiseled out of the granite in a pyramid position. That would be easier to hold up. But this is pillars, right? Probably made out of some kind of cement or something. It's still standing. 2,500 years. And what's interesting is that we're told that they were still building Colosseums exactly like that. Exactly like what was in Athens. In the latter part of Rome. 1500 AD. They were just building these Colosseums there. So the architecture of ancient Doric architecture, ancient Greek architecture, continued on for 2,000 years identical. The statues that they would build or, 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 or fashion in Rome, 1500 AD, are identical to the statues that the Greeks made 500 BC. Identical. The, the faces the posture, and some of these statues have the exact same posture as some of the statues that's in Egypt. Now, some have said, is it possible that this was a much, there was a lot less time between that, and it wasn't 2,000 years, but it was like a few hundred years? Because think about it, in this country, we've been here for 200 years, and we're not, you know, even then, even just 200 years, architecture changes. But here's the weird part, guys. Some, I told you guys the other day that the Sephardic Jews were driven out of Spain, the Iberian, Hebrew Peninsula. Iberian, Hebrewian. Seems like there was an awful lot of Sephardic Jews in Spain. They were, and, and, and it's kind of interesting because they were called Moors. And all the pictures says they were all black. And that's the only country that, 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 that the Europeans, you know, up there in Charlemagne's Holy Roman Empire, they couldn't conquer. One, one day, they finally did, you know, they had these inquisitions, the Spanish Inquisition and the Waldensian, and they murdered a lot of people. They had to convert to Christianity, or they had to be put to death, or they had to scatter and leave. Many of them left and went to the Ottoman Empire. Well, at that time, you know, what we call today the Turks. What I didn't know is that there were... A lot of Sephardic Jews in that area, maybe up to 60, 70 percent Sephardic Jews, millions of these individuals that 
somewhere around 1400 AD were doing wonderfully well. And all of a sudden, France and England and Germany decides that they're going to start controlling them. There was at some point a huge push to massacre millions of them that we've forgotten about. And then after that, what we got is two Balkan Wars and then World War I and World War II, which it seems as if you really get back and look, all four of those wars were completely orchestrated against the Sephardic Jews that were in that area. It was a great massacre. And remember, the Ottoman Empire owned the land of Palestine. And supposedly they were going to create a, a land where they could have their own land. But they never did it in 200 years. Until finally, a group of Ashkenazi Jews... Uh, remember, under uh -huh. Wilhelm, not under the H-I-T-L-E-R guy, but in World War I, it was Ashkenazi Jews that ran Germany. And they went into Turkey and didn't do the, the dirty deed, but they got the Armenians to wipe out this huge massacre for them. But this was going on from like 14th, 15th century all the way up to World War I and World War II. At some point, right around 1800, this area up in Germany called Bavaria, the Bavarian prince that goes back to this line that goes back that we talked about the other day where they brought the the the, the, the lineal descendant of David from Baghdad over to the Goth kingdom and they married Charlemagne's Aunt Alda and the Holy Roman Empire had this blood from the royal seed that was in Babylon and never went back to Palestine but came over to France. So they were ruling and they never did like the Sephardic Jews and they had inquisitions but these Bavarian Germans went down there to this Ottoman Empire and installed a king named Otto from the German ancestry that we were just talking about. What I find is very strange is that the Ottoman Empire was not named after this guy named Otto but after some other Otto a thousand years beforehand. Very odd to me. But during the reign of Otto, they ended up massacring peoples, just leveling all of their buildings and rebuilding it with Greek Colosseums, rebuilding the Parthenon and the Acropolis teaching them how to speak Greek, because they didn't even speak Greek. They changed their culture and told them they were all Greeks, and they had never heard of Greece, but they were in the country of Greece. They were Armenians. They were Sephardic Jews. But they convinced all these Sephardic Jews and a few Armenians to speak Greek and to build Greek architecture. And then 100 or 200 years later, they came in and massacred them again in World War II and made uh, 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 the land of Israel in 1948. I find it very odd because it was about that time, 1800, that they came to America and built the White House and, and our Capitol building that is built upon the same architecture, that Berlin was building all of these Greek architecture Colosseums and stuff in Berlin and Munich and different places in Germany. And it was worldwide. Everywhere they went, they started putting republics, constitutions, democracy. And teaching in school, everybody had to learn and everybody had to read Plato's Republic. 
You couldn't be involved in politics if you didn't understand Plato and read Aristotle. So, what's interesting is that there was such an interest in the Greek concepts. And some have said Greece and early Rome never existed. And I find no evidence for that except for this. That we have 2,000 years of Greek statues and Greek colosseums all around the world. Especially in Rome. And no other architecture. Just that Greek architecture and those Greek gods. No other architecture has lasted so long. And has been so important to the ruling class. They didn't change it one iota in 2,000 years. Look at the statues in late Roman Empire days and look at the early Greek and you'll see that it's exactly the same statues the same faces. It's the same statue we got off the coast of New York over there. Lady Liberty. Could it be that they invented Greek, its history, its culture, the philosophies? Maybe Plato never existed. They invented him as a Perfect example of what they wanted to teach us to be like. Remember, Plato was gay. I think it was Plato and Aristotle. There's talk of that. I don't know for sure. And there are lots of individuals, whether it be in Russia the Soviet Union, Germany, Britain, America, the Vatican, all over the world, that still to this day, everything we do is modeled after this, as if it was just made as a model. It's just a blueprint to inspire us. We tell people in school, look, this guy existed and this is what he taught. And this, this, this is where they had democracy and everybody had freedom and stuff like this. And this is what we want the world to become. So we'll teach this in school. Well, that would sound like not a really conspiracy. That would sound like a pretty good idea. But yeah, it would still be a conspiracy. The problem I'm having is I feel like that conspiracy that we're talking about actually was for a couple of thousand years in the area of Bavaria. And it seems very odd that these particular individuals in Bavaria would want to perpetuate that Greek way of life. <laughs> Remember, Paul is like, there's neither Jew nor Greek, right? And, and yet, somehow or another, these Germans incorporate them both and exemplify this particular lifestyle and demand under the force of law that you all must go to school in a Greek Colosseum and learn democracy and now the great one world government is coming and many people think it's going to be ruled over by the Vatican or the Washington DC or London or something or the Bavarian Doric architecture, Greek Renaissance that we had starting in 1800 till now. So all I'm saying is, is that yes, it's peculiar, but just because mankind had 2,000 years of making statues that all looked the same, if you really get to looking into it, I don't think we could just throw out the whole baby with the bathwater. I don't think that convinces me eyes at the beginning or ones that look like eyes for their dates. 
no cemeteries beyond 1700. These kinds of proofs that the world is in some kind of conspiracy to, to get rid of a thousand years of our history is just not enough proof for me. And I've done a lot of research, probably a lot of research that they haven't done. But here's the bottom line. The danger in all of this speculation, the earth is flat or this or that or whatever, there's missing thousand years, is that we've got to figure out in our little mind, what is the reason for all this? Why are they telling us we're going to the moon, but we're not? There's got to be a reason. And when you start speculating, you come up with strange ideas. And so this lady says, oh, it's because Jesus has already come. We missed it. We're already done through the thousand years. There's not going to be no kingdom of God. It's already happened. The Catholics are right now. Yeah, she's gone over to the Catholics. She believes in the Catholics now. And the great saints, those are all the people that are in the pictures you see with the little halos on their head. They existed for 2,000 years. They were saints. And they didn't really die. They just drifted off somewhere and went to the city of God in heaven at a certain point, right? And let loose the devil out of his kingdom. And he'll be let loose for a short time and we'll have the Gog, the war of Gog, of Magog, and then he's coming back again and then, whoo, like a third resurrection. Hell will be opened up again and we'll get another chance. Hey, sounds great, except for we're actually in the great tribulation that Jesus talked about. And we have proven that on this channel. Beyond, to me, beyond any doubt. And so I don't know if maybe some of these little theories that people are coming up with, if they don't have a lot of proof for those theories, and they're pushing those theories anyway without enough evidence to prove it, that they might just be steering people away from what's very, in, and I say very important right now, that we stay on track and focus, because we're about to go in, we are in the Great Tribulation, and we and so we're at that time that the book of Revelation says that they're going to be a mark of the beast and all of that. And we've got to concentrate on that. We just spent years studying and learning, growing up, going through this stupid world. And we think we got to figure it out. And right at the last minute, Jesus is about to return. And, and now we're all going to go back to, you know, some other opinion. Well, I guess Jesus isn't coming back. The Catholics were right. Oh, there was no Inquisition. That's just, that, that didn't happen. That's a, they just added that stuff. You know, all the stories about the Catholics killing, martyring our ancestors, right? I, I just got through watching a couple videos where, uh, people are saying that there was no slavery in this country. Only, uh, indentured servants and that they were really mostly white people. Hey, that's another interesting thing we could dive into and see if we've got another conspiracy going here. That, that, I, I guess there were no blacks in Africa. They all lived here in America. They are the real Abba originals. Aboriginals, meaning the original peoples of this country. Interesting idea. But, Really? At this juncture, we're about to go into the Great Tribulation, and now we've got to rethink slavery, history, the shape of the earth. Look, be very careful when you're going through the YouTube right now, because they are putting ideas into your head that if you spent 10 years studying it, you probably, if you did very careful research, you'd find out it was all not true. It's just more stuff to get scared and to start just giving up and, and getting confused about. Reality is still reality, guys. Everything's going to be all right. And the Lord Jesus is coming back soon. And this is real. Anyway, I'm David Vos. I'm going to go ahead and go, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one.